This is a traditional Native American medicine wheel. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you the basics of how to smudge yourself with sacred incense such as sage or copal, sacred Mayan incense, and how to smudge, purify, consecrate your medicine wheel circle. Before you enter the sacred circle, the sacred space, you should smudge yourself any pipes, crystals, feathers, any spiritual objects or objects of power that you will be taking into the sacred circle with you. Enter the medicine wheel through one of the sacred four directions, begin smudging, walk it to the center and across the medicine wheel. Then begin to smudge the circle by walking around it in a clockwise direction. Remember that you must smudge not only yourself, but every person, even animals that may be entering the sacred space. The medicine wheel invocation that you are going to see is based upon the ancient Allegheny mound builder tradition. Later on in the video, we will show you how to build a medicine wheel and diagram out the spiritual energy dynamics of how a medicine wheel works. To invoke the sacred energies and powers of the medicine wheel, begin by facing the direction of north. You are going to invoke the powers of the four directions the sacred four directions of the compass, the powers of the above, the powers of the earth, by going clockwise again around the sacred circle. Beginning with the north, spirit of cougar, spirit of the north, according to the ancient Allegheny tradition, we invoke your presence here as the hunter of sacred knowledge. As that guardian spirit which grants us clarity to see all things. Moving to the east. We invoke the presence the spirit of the white wolf, guardian spirit of the east, white wolf who grants us courage to face obstacles, who grants us the courage to face those things within and without that we need to transform. Walking to the south, we invoke the spiritual presence of Badger, guardian spirit of the south. Badger who represents cleverness and knows the way of the earth and the underworld. Walking to the west, we invoke the sacred presence of Black Bear, guardian spirit of the west, bringer of medicine knowledge, of knowledge of healing under the ways of the wild woods, 
and the ways of the earth. Protector and guardian of bear medicine, one of the most powerful of the healing medicines. Walking back to the north where you began and then back to the center. We invoke the power of the sun. Hunapku, the power of the light. We invoke the power and the presence of the great mystery, the great spirit. We invoke and invite into the sacred circle the presence of the moon, Nokomis, Grandmother Moon. We invite into the presence of this circle Mother Earth, known to the ancient Toltec Mayan peoples as Toki Tonatsin, Grandmother Earth. We invite into this sacred circle the presence of our ancestor spirits, the spirits of the four winds, the four kingdoms of nature. Come into this sacred circle, grant protection, guidance, power, and knowledge. At this point in time, you have consecrated your sacred medicine wheel, your circle for ceremony or meditation by calling on guardian spirit protectors of the four directions, the powers of the earth, the sky, spirits of nature, as well as ancestral guardian spirits and spirit guides. The particular energies used in this medicine wheel ceremony, as will be explained later, invoke the powers of the Toltec Mayan tradition and the ancient Allegheny mound builders. The spirit totem protectors of the four directions are taken from the Allegheny or Mississippian mound builder tradition. They are very traditional. The attributions of these particular guardian spirits to the directions are over a thousand years old. There are many types of ceremonies that can be done in a medicine wheel such as this. It can be a place of attunement to the forces of nature, to the powers of the universe. A place where you can go to be by yourself, to meditate, to contemplate. It can become a place of healing for yourself or others by bringing in the energies of the sacred directions of the compass, the sky, the sun, the moon, and the earth. It can be a place for dreaming and vision questing many, many different traditional and sacred uses to the medicine wheel. When you are done with your medicine wheel ceremony, you need to thank the powers that you have invoked, as well as ground the energy that you have called up. This is by done, by starting with the direction of north, Thanking the spirit of Kuja for being present in the sacred circle. Going to the east, thanking the spirit of White Wolf for being present in this sacred circle. Going to the east, to the south, and moving in the clockwise manner. Calling upon the spirit of Badger, thanking the spirit of Badger for being present in this sacred circle. And then walking to the west and thanking the spirit of Black Bear for being present in this sacred circle. Walking back to the center, thank 
the spirit of the creator and the sun. Thank the spirit of the moon, Nokomis. Thank the spirits, earth, sky, and water, for being present in this circle. And send thanks to Mother Earth for being present in this circle. One way of ending your medicine wheel ceremony after you've thanked all the powers that are there, and one way of earthing the energy and grounding it before you leave the circle, is for everyone who has been present in the medicine wheel circle to kneel down to the earth, place one or both hands upon the earth, and send healing light energy into the earth mother, to the center, to the crystal core of the earth. Send the energy into the earth so that the earth herself, all beings on it, may receive the healing energy. This is a form of an earth healing meditation or ceremony. Then when you stand up, before you leave the sacred circle or medicine wheel, take a few moments to go within yourself, connect with your breathing, the energy that has been called up in the circle. As you breathe out, feel that energy beginning to flow down through your feet into the earth so that you are grounding your energy demanifesting what you have manifested through the spiritual work. Then before you leave the circle, you may feel a return wave of energy from the earth and from the environment around you flowing over you. This is a return blessing of spiritual and life energy from the earth mother. Receive it with thanks, give thanks for it. And then when you feel ready, begin to exit the circle through one of the gateways of the circle of the four directions. A medicine wheel such as this can be a permanent sacred space on your land or wherever you build it. It can be something that you only leave down for a few days. It is possible to even build a medicine wheel, a small one, within a room of a house or a dwelling. Later on in this video, we will talk about the method of actually building your medicine wheel, what order to place the stones in, different sizes of the medicine wheel, and we'll talk a little bit about the energy dynamics, the flow of the life and light energy through the stones of this medicine wheel. Oh.
I'll tell you, I wonder how long it takes to build one of these things. Probably a couple.
This lecture is concerning the teachings of the Brotherhood of the Feathered Serpent, the teachings related to the great teacher of light of ancient North and South America, he who was called Quetzalcoatl by the Toltec, Aztec peoples, known as Wakia, many other names, or the Peowan, or the prophet to the ancient peoples of North America. For the next half hour or so, we're going to be talking about some of the history of the Brotherhood of the Feathered Serpent in both North and South America, talking about some of the sacred teachings of light associated with Quetzalcoatl, and talking a little bit about some of the ancient mounds and sacred sites here in North America that are connected with the legends of Quetzalcoatl. To begin this session, we are going to take a few minutes of meditation and a few minutes of prayer to orient our consciousness, our spirits, to receive, revive these ancient teachings of light. If you would, take a few moments to relax yourself. Become aware of your breathing, breathing slowly, gently in and out. Let your mind and body become centered and receptive to these ancient teachings of light. As we now in sacred, sacred prayer call upon the lineage of the teachers of light, this is the prayer of the seven galactic directions. From the East House of Light, may wisdom dawn in us, so we may see all things in clarity. From the North House of Night, may wisdom ripen in us, so that we may know all from within. From the West House of Transformation, may wisdom be transformed into right action so we may do what must be done. From the south house of the eternal sun, may the right action reap the harvest, so we may enjoy the fruits of planetary being. From above house of heaven, where star people and ancestors gather, may their blessings come to us now. From below house of earth, may the heartbeat of her crystal core bless us with harmonies to end all war. From the center galactic source, which is everywhere at once, may everything be known as the light of mutual love. Oyum Hunaku Eva Maya Imaho. I'll gently allow your awareness to come back to the here and now. When you're ready, slowly open your eyes, find yourself back, relax. This lecture is an introduction to some of the history associated with the Brotherhood of the Feathered Serpent, Quetzalcoatl, and to the basic teachings of light that were known in the ancient Americas and how some of them have been passed down to the present day. This great teacher of light was known as Quetzalcoatl among the Toltec Mayan peoples. Quetzalcoatl in the Nahuatl language means the feathered serpent. In some of the ancient Mayan languages, this same teacher of light was known as Kukulkan, which also means feathered serpent in the ancient Mayan tongue. The 
term feathered serpent refers to a specific energy, a pattern of energy, which means a combination of the energies of earth and sky. The serpent represents the energy of the earth, the sacred earth energy, sometimes referred to as the serpent power or serpent energy, and that it runs both through the earth as well, as well as through individual human beings. It also refers to the chakra system of every human being, the internal energy system of every human being. The term feathered refers to higher energies. <clears throat> The symbol of the feathered serpent, which is found throughout ancient North and South America, is usually depicted as a serpent <clears throat> or a dragon representing the sacred power of the earth, with feathered mane going down the back of the serpent. These feathers represent higher energies, what we would sometimes call the higher energy body or the aura. When the two terms, feathered and serpent, are brought together, it means a person or an initiate whose higher consciousness has been awakened, whose energy system has been awakened, cleansed, and purified, a person who is ready to receive knowledge of light directly from the spirit. A term that could also be used to describe the ancient initiates of the feathered serpent teachings in terms more known to people in the West is that an initiate of the feathered serpent teachings would be a Gnostic, taken from the ancient Greek. Gnostic, Gnosis means one who knows, one who has direct, intuitive, spiritual, and psychic knowledge of the light and of the spirit. One of the main symbols of Quetzalcoatl is an ancient universal symbol that plays particular importance in the ancient teachings of the Americas. <clears throat> it is sometimes called the solar cross or the cross within the circle. The cross was one of the main symbols of Quetzalcoatl. As such, it symbolizes four directions of the compass. It also means the bringing together of the energies of above, of the sky, with the energies of the earth, or matter, bring together a fusion of spirit and matter, alchemy, another term that could be used for this process. <clears throat> Enclosing the sacred cross within the circle, it begins to represent the teachings of the medicine wheel, because unknown to many people here in modern times, Certain aspects of the ancient medicine wheel teachings actually came from those particular initiates and brotherhoods that were devoted to the teachings of the feathered serpent, the Quetzalcoatl. And in ancient times, those teachings of the medicine wheels were brought to North America by a whole lineage of teachers and prophets of light who established the medicine wheel teachings within many North American Indian tribes. Quetzalcoatl, according to the ancient native teachings, is a great teacher of light, what some people in Western mysticism would call an ascended master, who reincarnates roughly every 700 years in human form, comes back into incarnation in North or South America to renew and regenerate the teachings of light. Part of the teachings associated with Quetzalcoatl was an inner system of spiritual development devoted to bringing in higher energies of light from the stars, from the sun, from higher dimensions of light, combining that with the energies of the earth, and causing a complete transformation within the mind, body, and spirit of human beings. One of the terms used for a 
modern formulation of these teachings of Quetzalcoatl is taken from the ancient language of the Toltecs. It's called Nawalism. Nawal is a term that refers to the unknown. It's very similar to the Chinese term, the Tao, which describes that which is beyond rational human comprehension. Nawalism is an ancient spiritual movement or pathway which still exists in North and South America. Each tribe in North and South America ascribes to a particular Nawal lineage or solar lineage of teachings of light. My own lineage or Nawal solar lineage relating to the teachings of Quetzalcoatl comes from two different parallel lines of spiritual development. One of my teachers was an old medicine man who was half Sioux, half Mohawk, who himself was an initiate and a priest in the Brotherhood of the Feathered Serpent. Within some of the Plains Indians tribes, some of the Algonquin and even the Iroquois tribes, there's an ancient lineage going directly back to one of the incarnations of Quetzalcoatl, or the great prophet in ancient North America. I've also had several teachers of the Cherokee tribal lineage who themselves continue some of the teachings associated with the Pale One or Quetzalcoatl. As such, I've had an opportunity to study directly within some of the tribal lineages the teachings of light associated with this great spiritual master. One of the most important aspects of this system of teachings is the development of what is called the body of light. The body of light <clears throat> is an immortal body of pure thought energy, pure light energy that can be put on by a human being if they have done the proper spiritual and esoteric work upon themselves. In the ancient legends of Quetzalcoatl, coming to us from Mexico and Yucatan, the ancient Toltec Mayan cultures, it is described how Quetzalcoatl went through a process of learning, of spiritual birth, death, and rebirth, and how upon his death, his conscious death, his whole physical body, his whole being was transfigured into that of an immortal being of light associated with the planet Venus. Planet Venus in many ancient teachings is associated with the teachings of unconditional and universal love, a very high level of spiritual consciousness. The energy of Quetzalcoatl, some of his prophecies, is also associated with the ancient calendars associated with Venus in the ancient Mayan Toltec teachings. Now, Quetzalcoatl is believed to have been the first great Nawal or teacher of light who made the complete transformation back into light within the ancient Native American traditions. As such, he began a pathway of spiritual development that any human being can attune to and can follow. In recent years, there have been a lot of controversies surrounding one particular branch of the Toltec and Mayan pathway uh, concerning the works of Carlos Castaneda, the UCLA anthropologist who apprenticed himself almost 30 years ago now to a group of Mexican native shamans and sorcerers. Information that is coming to us in recent years from both Castaneda as well as other shamans and teachers from the lineage of the Toltec Mayan culture basically provide corroborating evidence that 
Castaneda definitely knows what he is talking about, that he has truly experienced what he has written about in his books. Many other spiritual seekers have sought out teachers from the Mayan Toltec lineage associated with Quetzalcoatl and are practicing specific teachings and techniques in their own lives quite successfully. And many of the deeper teachings of light are now returning to the Americas, not only to the native Indian tribes, but to everyone who now lives in North and South America. One of the things that has come about as a result of this is that we are gaining a deeper understanding of the teachings associated with Quetzalcoatl, the meaning of exactly what is the body of light, what are some of the ancient native prophecies associated with Quetzalcoatl, with the earth changes, the return of a higher spiritual consciousness to the earth. A lot of these teachings we really began to make their return in August 1987. August 1987 was the time of the harmonic convergence. Harmonic convergence was a time, a date prophesied in the ancient Mayan calendar, a time when spiritual gateways or doorways between the higher realms of light and the earth plane would begin to open, when new energies would begin to pour forth from these dimensions into the earth plane, and the consciousness of humanity would begin to become awakened. The Harmonic Convergence of 1987 was also part of the prophesied return of the teachings and lineages associated with Quetzalcoatl. On the weekend of Harmonic Convergence in August 1987, hundreds of thousands of people across the planet gathered together at various sacred sites all over the planet for ritual, for ceremony, for prayer, meditation, to help purify themselves, and to help heal the planet, to consciously bring in the higher energies for the healing of our Mother Earth. There's also a time when many of the native peoples in North and South America felt that the ancient teachings and the ancient lineages of light would begin to make the return, and indeed that has begun to happen. The ancient medicine wheels are being reborn, <clears throat> the ancient teachings of light are coming back in many, many different ways. Now for a moment I would like to talk about the fact that the teachings of Quetzalcoatl did not exist just in ancient Mexico, among the Toltec, Mayan, Aztec people but that many centuries ago, these teachings actually came to North America. Among the ancient mound builder tribes of North America, especially with one particular culture of mound builder tribes, known as the Allegheny, better known to students of history and archaeology as the Mississippian Mound Builder culture. The Allegheny is a name that was given to the Mississippian Mound Builder cultures by the Iroquois people. It's also a term that they themselves used to name their tribe or name their people. According to the ancient traditions and histories, there were at least four great waves of colonization that made up <clears throat> the Allegheny migrations from the area of Mexico, Yucatan, to North America. The last great wave of migrations occurred in the 13, early 1300s, early 1400s, when the ancestors of the people that became known as the Natchez Indians landed at the mouth of the Mississippi River in Louisiana, 
traveled by their huge canoes up the Mississippi River and settled in the area of what we now call the state of Mississippi, near the uh, present day site of the town of Natchez. They brought with them a calendar system, teachings of light, <clears throat> an economic and social system based in the ancient Toltec Mayan cultures of Mexico and Yucatan. They brought with them the ability to orient and build great temple mounds. They were the last great temple mound building or pyramid mound building uh, tribe here in North America. They were killed off by disease and by warfare with early French explorers. The remnants of the Natchez, those who survived the disease and the killing, migrated eastward into southeastern United States, intermarried, were brought into the tribes of the Creek, Choctaw, and Cherokee tribes. So as a consequence of that, we have many of the ancient mound builder traditions surviving within the languages and the spiritual traditions of those particular southeastern Indian tribes. But what is also very interesting <clears throat> is that well over a thousand years ago, Quetzalcoatl himself in one of his recurring incarnations in North and South America actually visited physically the ancient mound builder cities and capitals spent a number of years traveling through North America, connecting with the different tribes, the different cultures of the ancient mound builders here in North America. Each tribe or group of people that this great teacher of light connected with, he taught an inner circle of initiates his system of spiritual development. How to use the energies of light, the energies of the sun, combined with the energies of the earth, and how to use those energies for spiritual transformation. As such, coming down to the present day through many of the remaining tribal medicine societies, for instance, among the Sioux, Lakota Sioux Indians, Cherokee, and a number of other tribes in North America, we have specific priesthood lineages that trace their teachings directly back to the ancient mound builders and to the visitations and teachings of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, going back a thousand years or more. What has also been brought forth is that Quetzalcoatl himself, and over a period of several centuries, he was followed by other members of his priesthood, other teachers of his lineage from Mexico, who traveled up into North America periodically to renew and expand upon the teachings of life. One of the great teachings, besides dealing with the teachings of the sun and the light, that was part of the teachings in the great temples mystery schools in Mexico, was the understanding that everything in life moves in a circle. And this sacred circle was called the teaching of the medicine wheels. And through the teachings and the understanding of the medicine wheel, which is the circle, with the solar cross of the four directions inside of it, this tool or teaching of the sacred medicine wheel, or the sacred circle as it is sometimes called, could be used to understand human consciousness, could be used to understand how one aspect of life connects with another from areas that we would now call sociology and economics to human health, the human internal energy system including the chakras, how one area of the earth relates to another in geographic, psychic, and spiritual ways. Higher mathematics and geometry could be taught through understanding of concepts of the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel teachings were brought to North America by this lineage of teachers of light associated with the prophet or Quetzalcoatl. 
And as such, these medicine wheel teachings have survived down to the present day, where within the last couple of decades they have been renewed, been brought forth to the public, so that these teachings may be used in everyday life. The teachings associated with the medicine wheel as a type of spiritual discipline, as a tool for understanding ourselves and the universe, is one of the higher aspects of the teachings of the Brotherhood of the Feathered Serpent. The secret esoteric system of utilizing higher light energies and sunlight to awaken the higher energy centers in the human being, to transform the mind and body is another aspect of the system. Along with certain meditation techniques, techniques for gazing at the stars, the suns, the planets, connecting with their spiritual essence or spiritual energy, taking that energy into oneself for transformation. These are all part of that path. Also the use of sound and visualization of certain images to change your consciousness, to help conduct the energies through oneself is another aspect of this. The use of the light energy combined with sound energy combined with certain stances or postures of power make up the ancient yoga-like teachings associated with the Brotherhood of the Feathered Serpent. Many of the ancient prayer languages used in the tribes of North America, used even to this day by certain medicine people, are actually variations of the old Mayan language that was brought to the ancient peoples of North America by the teachers from the Toltec Mayan tradition. People today in many of these tribes will say that they do not understand certain of the languages used by their priests for their incantations, for their prayers and such. That's because many of those languages derived originally from the Hoto, which is a language of the Aztec, Toltec peoples, or from one of the dialects of the ancient Mayans. But many of the words can be traced back to the original Mayan ancestral language. One of the more universal mantras <clears throat> that is used within certain North American Indian ceremonies Actually, ceremony is also all over the planet, but it's also used <clears throat> in the great Mayan Toltec tradition. It's a very simple one word mantra, which is used to denote the spirit of life or the breath of life coming from the great spirit. It is simply H U HU. It is used as a mantra of power by the Islamic Sufi mystics. It is used within certain North American Indian prayers and words of power. This makes up one of the names of the great spirit from Mayan, Unapu, which is the invisible spirit and consciousness, the God consciousness behind all life. There are many other words from the ancient Mayan Toltec language which can be used, which can be learned for your meditative uses, can be used to help align your consciousness with the energies of the earth, the stars, and the sun. Another one that you can use to attune your energies to the sun, to the higher light, This Mayan phrase, which refers to solar light energy, kin, K-I-N. Whenever you are doing a solar observation ceremony, such as rising in the morning to face the sun, to give the sun greetings, or if you're doing a sunset ceremony, you can say, 
this particular mantra at least three times. Nine times altogether if you want to do it. Three times for your body, three times for your mind, three times for your soul or spirit. But at least three times if you vibrate or say this mantra while turning in the direction of the sun and trying to take in the solar energy to your mind and body. This phrase or word of power will help attune your consciousness to the solar energy. If you're using it for meditation, it is pronounced Kim. 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 Vibrating this word of power or mantra and you are meditating, doing some type of solar gazing or solar ceremony, will make the effects much more powerful. Both of these phrases, Hu and Kin, are taken from the ancient Mayan Toltec teachings. They are just examples of how you can do a deeper study of this ancient language to come to a deeper understanding of these teachings of light. This lecture is but a brief introduction to some of the history associated with the Brotherhood of the Feathered Serpent, some of these teachings of light. Further audio tapes, printed material, and eventually videotapes will bring out more of this lineage of light, of the specific techniques and teachings. There's a lot of material that's coming out now from different teachers of the lineage associated with the Brotherhood of the Feathered Serpent. Quo. Strive to make yourself aware of these teachings if you're interested in following this path. It is a very ancient, very powerful spiritual lineage. It's over 2,000 years old, possibly older, and it still survives among the natives of, it, of North and South America to this day. Are there any questions? about what we've talked about so far. Remember that these teachings of light are there for you to follow, to use. <clears throat> you may use some of these techniques of light energy meditation and combine with sacred sound at certain sacred power centers such as Tarleton Cross Mound, which we are talking about and you'll be viewing in this video. Tarleton Cross Mound in central Ohio is one of the most powerful ancient sacred sites devoted to Quetzalcoatl. It's a mound or an earthwork associated with the shape of the Mayan cross. Remember that the cross was one of the main symbols of Quetzalcoatl. It's a very powerful spiritual center of light. Another place within central Ohio, south central Ohio actually, that is sacred to the energies of the feathered serpent and some of the Mayan prophecies, is the Great Serpent Mound, an energy center which has been awakened with the harmonic convergence of 1987. Very powerful spiritual and psychic energies are present there. It's a place where you can go for pilgrimage, for meditation, I and many others over the last few years have had many powerful spiritual experiences at sacred sites such as Great Serpent Mound and Tarleton Cross Mound. There are certain specific protocols and techniques which can be used to augment your study at any time that you may spend at certain sacred sites such as those. I would like to thank you for being present. Go in peace, go with the light, continue your pathway on the good red road, the way of the feathered serpent, the way of the rainbow warrior. Thank you.